Sometimes the ocean needs to blow off steam. Off the point of Brittany in western France, the sea flexes its muscles with a harsh beauty. Fascinated by this impressive display, one could almost forget the danger. Storms are spellbinding, a wild fantasy for land dwellers, a tragic menace for sailors. The fishermen of the tumultuous Ra de Saint are both humble and brave in their pursuit of a noble prey. Others, intrepid storm hunters, track the bad weather in huge waves as they push themselves to their limit in their never-ending search for the absolute. Don't go there. The least problem, you'll end up on the rocks. Every winter, Brittany is buffeted by storms. Here, the foam and black rocks, caught up in the shifting light and currents, mark the land's end. The Rat de Saint is a passage six kilometers wide between the Pointe du Rat and the island of Saint. For sailors, this is Brittany's most dangerous spot, an infamous passage. Twice a day, the surface of the water turns into a churning treadmill. When the Iroise Sea and the English Channel fill up and empty, the powerful tides give birth to one of Europe's strongest currents. The Rat de Saint is an immense torrent that plows into a barrier of submerged rocks. Only a few brave souls dare venture here. If the Vieille Lighthouse could speak, it would tell just how violent and brutal the ocean can be. Most of the time, the spectacle of the Ra plays to an empty house. There have been no lighthouse keepers here for a long time. Here we see the evacuation of the last residents of the Ra de Saint. The lighthouse keepers, stationary sailors, had a front row seat, but the final curtain came down for them in December 1995 with the last shift change. They were the guardian angels of the Ra de Saint and the local fishermen. It was better when the keepers were there. The door was open. We could see them going up and down. It was a presence. Now the door is always closed, and the spot is even more hostile. Only the fishermen remain. For 40 years, a handful of daring men have been risking their lives to work in this swirl of foam and rocks. We get scared. Sometimes very scared. Olivier Mayville is an old salt of the point a hard-headed sailor, an aristocrat of fishing. Six months of the year, 
He fishes for sea bass, the most expensive and sought after fish found along the French coasts. There's a noble side to our profession, the contact with the elements. To do this work, you have to, above all, love the sea. And you also have to have some nerve, because you're fishing in rough seas. It's a tough, dangerous profession, especially in places like Radisson, where we fish. You have to know these spots. You can't just come stumbling in here. Olivier is the captain of the Mundaka. He's one of the few who dare tackle the waves of the Rade Saint. Only about a dozen fishermen come here. It's no place for amateurs, veterans only. Aboard his little boat, Olivier can count only on himself. One hand for the rod, the other for the boat, and both eyes peeled. You have to keep the boat on course, and above all, avoid running a beam to the waves. That's when the boat is the most vulnerable. You really have to slide down the back of the wave, or do a quick U-turn and point the bow right into the waves. That's how you minimize the risks. Most of the people out here are locals, and you really have to know the ropes. You can't just sail in here without knowing something about the spot in the sea. These are very dangerous waters. There have been a lot of accidents, and it's really a profession where you have to respect the sea and not take risks when it's too rough. Olivier is a craftsman of the sea. He respects what it offers. Rod and reel fishing is a duel between man and sea. It's also a somewhat monastic work that goes from sunrise to sunset. You catch sea bass one by one in a silent waiting game. And when the swell rises, the Rade de Saint becomes a road of suffering. After his studies in marine biology, Olivier could have ended up in a lab, but he chose to take up rod and reel to pursue Brittany's most coveted fish, line-caught sea bass. Today, the sea is too rough for fishing, a boat-breaking, man-breaking sea. Olivier is in close contact with the elements. The weather always has the last word. Olivier never forgets that people have lost their lives here in the Ra. This kind of fishing is no game. Our Lady of the Shipwrecked is there to remind sailors that the contest taking place at her feet has its rules. We're always on our toes because the fish are out there and you have to go after them when you can. Sometimes we'll be stuck in port for several days, so as soon as we can get out, even if it's for only half a day, we go. We'll take a look and maybe think, hey, it's good today, we have a window, 
Then we take the boat and go. If we have three, four hours, we can get lucky and get a decent day's catch. Early morning, after two days at Dockside, Olivia can at last leave the port of Odierne, an hour from the Rade de Saint. Being drawn to the element of chance is not enough to make a rod and reel fisherman. One has to be ready for combat and sacrifice. On board the Mundaka, Olivier is totally concentrated, like a boxer about to climb into the ring. A boxer slash rodeo rider. He'll have to take the blows, but dish them out as well. Bob and weave, thrust and parry. We wait for the birds to come feeding at the surface. It's a sign that there are sea bass. You see, they prey on mackerel and sardines that flee to the surface. So I have to cast my line inside the school while cutting through the waves. And there, you have a sort of barrier of three or four big standing waves you have to get past. And you really do not want to get parallel to the waves. You can't make the slightest error. There's a lot of tension. You have to keep an eye on the other boats. You have to watch out for the others, and at the same time go over the right spot to try to catch the fish. Look, I got one. If it were that easy, the sea would have been fished out a long time ago. It's all part of the game. It also means that the fish stand a chance. For Olivier, every day out at sea is a win. In spite of the constant risks and hardships, he has learned to appreciate the watery world that surrounds him and adapt to a life that is hard, but which he has chosen. I do this because I love it. I think you have to love it to do this kind of work. It takes up a lot of time. Yet, you're on the water and have that feeling of freedom. The weather and the fish call the shots out here.
C'est vraiment un endroit magnifique. It's really a magnificent, unspoiled spot. Fishing is, when you come down to it, a man, a boat, and a rod. It's really a pure and wonderful profession. Maybe we take it for granted because we live it every day, but it's our passion and we're hooked. It's really wonderful to work in a site like the Pont du Rat. In this light, you could almost forget how dangerous the Rat de Saint is. Yet this beauty should not diminish the worth of the men who confront it. Raging weather, as we call it, is when you get a wind blowing between force 9 and force 12. Off the Wesson Island, at the mouth of the channel, we had 20-meter waves. And we did rescues in these 20-meter waves. Yes, it brings back fond memories. That's for sure. And sometimes I dream about it. I don't know why. But I'm back on board. And I'm not 50 or 55 like when I retired. I'm 75, like I am now. And it's strange. Well... It's just a dream. <laughs> voilà. Jean Bulot is known as Captain Storm. He commanded a legendary boat, La Baie Flandre, a tug rescue boat capable of standing up to Brittany's most extreme conditions to help ships in trouble. Jean is now looking back on his life as a sailor and the places marked by his adventures as a rescue worker. Jean and the rescue crew from Port Sal are headed for the Four Channel in the Iroise Sea, where a maritime catastrophe changed his life. <laughs> Here, in this zone bristling with shoals, is where his career as a rescue worker began in the late 1970s, a few days after one of the worst shipwrecks on the coast of Brittany, the wreck of the Amoco Cadiz. The oil tanker was over 300 meters long and broke in two, spewing forth thousands of tons of oil. You have to imagine yourself in the middle of all that, the waves crashing into the cliffs, a boat that's drifting and about to run aground on the rocks. Luckily, the Amoco accident happened at night. They didn't see it, but they'd have jumped overboard. <laughs> For Jean, it's highly symbolic to return to the spot where the tanker went down. He recalls his blind rage. In short, it was the wreck of that ship that changed Captain Bulot's life. He became a rescue worker, captain of the first high seas tug rescue boat based in Brittany, so that the sea would never again be tainted with oil.
adventures written in seawater are not forgotten. Jean is heir to the Cape Horners and the long distance sailing captains. 400 years and 16 generations of navigators have forged his character. Jean became a writer, and he draws his material from his adventurous life. A tireless teller of sea yarns, he has a seafarer's gaze and saltwater memories. His next book will once again take him to this land of mist and lighthouses. Jean is on his way to the island of Molen, where he's going to share his memories of storms and rescues. He's with Chris, his projectionist. Today, he's going to show a movie to the 13 children of the island's one school. Jean wants to transmit the human values of sea rescue to the younger generation. They take big risks, especially the men on the aft deck. Most of the time they don't see the wave coming because they're busy with something else. So there's the old saying, one hand for yourself and one hand for the boat. And when someone does notice something, they'll communicate with gestures or shouting because there's so much noise around with the engines and the wind. It's not even worth using walkie-talkies or the intercom. They wouldn't hear anything. And it's very dangerous because the men aren't secured. They don't use harnesses. Above all, on the aft deck, when they're moving around and a huge wave washes over, it covers everything, and the guys can get tossed around, and the steel cables can start lashing around. The guy can't get free, and he can be cut in two, or swept overboard. The rescue boat goes into action as soon as the ship is in trouble. They say that these sailors, from the captain to the deckhand, are willing to put their life on the line in order to save the lives of others. They're anonymous heroes in the heart of a storm. In the course of his career at sea, Jean Bulot has assisted 200 ships in distress. Did you have any rescue that were really difficult? Yes, nearly all the rescues were difficult because they always took place in bad weather. For over 15 years, I carried out rescues along with my crew, of course, because the captain is nothing without his crew. When a boat asks for help, it means they're already in trouble. So we go out to help. We don't care about the weather or the size of the boat. Our objective is to save the crew and after the boat. Jean 
Jean pushes on with his voyage between the mainland and the islands of Molen and Wesson. He feels right at home in a ship's bridge. It's where he spent his life. Abby Bourbon, come in. This is from Vertu. Coming into the island of Wesson, he is struck by an ironic twist of history. The Abbe Bourbon, the tugboat that replaced Captain Bulot's Abbe Flandre, is there moored in the shelter of the cliffs, all ready to face the next storm. Here we're facing the Molen Islands with the Carillon Lighthouse over there. That's the Fonver Channel running between Wesson and the Molen Islands and Carillon. They say this spot has a bad bottom with all of its... It has lots of shoals, rocks, currents, nasty seas. It's a very dangerous zone. At Saint, you have the Vieille Lighthouse in the Ra de Saint. Over there is Armen at the tip of the Chaussée de Saint. Then there's the Pierre Noir Black Rocks, which enables you to avoid the rocks around Molen. Those were all legendary lighthouses. You realize that lighthouse keepers would stay out there for a week at a time, sometimes two, when they couldn't change on account of the weather. Now it's somewhat better, but it was really acrobatic. Plus, your morale had to be pretty solid to stay out there. Personally, I'd rather be out on the water than in a lighthouse. It makes one wonder just how the lighthouses can remain standing when the wind whips up the sea like this. One of the greatest concentrations of lighthouses and sunken wrecks can be found around the islands of Finisterre. Wesson is also known as Sentinel Island, further proof of how dangerous shoals have always been for seafarers. From its height of 55 meters, Créache, the most imposing lighthouse, dominates the cliffs and fogs and still guides the ships sailing off the coast of Brittany. In his books, Jean speaks out against the folly of humans, the oil spills and the sailors that are abandoned. Captain Bulot never left the community of sea folk. In winter, he isolates himself to write. In his haven, on a little island in the Morbihan Gulf, he blends his own experiences with imagined stories. This sailor writer depicts the adventures of men and women confronted with the hardships of the weather and life itself. An obvious choice for someone known as Captain Storm. We worked in the worst meteorological conditions. Nasty weather. And each time, with every storm, we'd bring the rescued boats back to Brest or Cherbourg. And they'd call me Captain Storm. That's how I got my nickname. Yes, I feel good here. And it brings back fond memories. 
Some people like picnic weather. I prefer the wind and the movement. I was born in the wind and the waves, and I'll die in the wind and the waves. Force 10 storm. Brittany hunkers down, and the sea hurls torrents of surf up to impressive heights. With the howling wind and the unchained breakers, the fury of the sea knows no limits. This buffeting is the first serious alert of a winter that will be like all the others. Sometimes the storms off the western tip of Brittany follow one another for days on end. Everybody else is protecting themselves from the raging weather. A handful of men, eager for a rush of adrenaline, head out to tackle the waves. The people here live with this. They live with the storm systems, but we have a different take on that. I mean, the locals have all lost someone at sea. It used to be only the fishermen's families here. They have a more suspicious attitude than we do. For them, the sea doesn't mean pleasure. Every time the elders would see me on the beach, they'd say, oh no, you can't go out there today. It's too dangerous. So we've brought a different attitude toward the ocean, which used to be synonymous with the storm's sinister side. Du côté obscur, quoi. In this corner of Finistère, Bruno André is a breed apart, ever in search of the ocean's peaks and troughs. Twenty years ago, Bruno settled here on the tip of Cape Cizan. The Pointe du Ra is really a rugged spot. The way it's formed with all these sharp rocks, it's quite austere. It's black, it's gray. But it can also be magnificent with the contrast between the bad weather, like today. You'll get, say, a ray of sunlight that breaks through and gives you a riot of colors. In the blink of an eye, you go from a kind of creepy darkness to a paradise on Earth with green water, bright white caps. It makes a landscape, a real moving painting. Bruno has the humility of the local inhabitants. Two years ago, he weathered a tempest in his own life, and it was the sea that saved him. 
I went from living the dream of a professional windsurfer, traveling, enjoying each day on the water, to a hospital bed, laid up for two months, missing an organ. Well, missing two kidneys. They told me it was all over. I realized that it could all come to an end, but I never accepted it. I said to myself, okay, someday it will all finish, but not like this. Bruno had a kidney transplant from his sister. It was a little over a year ago. Thanks to his determination to live and the energy he draws from the sea every day, he has been able to continue his passion. His old Renault Quatrel is a familiar sight around Cape Cizan. Whatever the weather, he'll be driving around the point in search of the perfect wave. Today, Bruno is going to meet an old friend, Antoine, another surfing buff. Hello, Antoine. Bruno. Hello, Antoine. There's some action out there? Uh, a few nice sets. Right, it's what they forecasted. Could be pretty heavy. Look at this one. Plus, there's some good walls today. Look. Yeah, it's all good. The wind's shifting. It's going to be good. Right. It's raining a bit, but that won't stop us. It's exciting because each time it's like a new discovery. What's it going to be like today? Will I be up to it? Or we'll joke, will the water accept me today or spit me out on the first wave? It's a very deep relationship. Here in the Odeon Bay, the wind and swell offer them perfect conditions. I've always heard that you're never stronger than nature. You're never stronger than the wind. So you have to learn how to play with them. If you fight nature, you'll always lose, because it's always the biggest wave, the strongest wind that'll have the last word. The idea is to adapt and to create an osmosis out there between man and nature. At a certain moment in my life, I realized that I didn't know just how lucky I was. It opened my eyes and made me realize that I was really a very lucky person. And now, I savor all these things in a different way. This misfortune taught me something very profound. Bruno faced up to his disease as he faces up every day to the sea. BMS with the report number 15 for Friday, January 9th, 2015. BMS weather report. Like the refrain of a song, it announces that the wind is not about to drop. Wind, south-southwest, 7, rising to 8 at the end of the night and tomorrow night. Gusts from Penmar to Berlin. Forecast valid from Friday, January 9th at 21 hours to Saturday, January 9th. On the water or in the air, the storm hunters, gladiators of the wind and sea, are the sole witnesses of these unchained elements. The coast of Brittany is just so beautiful, and the weather makes it even more beautiful. It's a joy to see it from up here in the air. We have an exceptional job. Not everyone has the chance to see this and be out here in this weather. 
pouvoir y aller euh, avec ce temps-là. Et Roi de Foxy, ma papa, rebonjour, en face whisky vers la bénédiction passée, un whisky de camion. Thierry at the controls. No one can beat him at flying a helicopter in the most extreme winds. As for Jean-René Kérusoré, he always has his eyes peeled in winter, his favorite season. For 10 years, he's been stalking storms, eager to capture images of nature and its fury. We're over the Vieille Lighthouse. We'll be working between 150 to 500 feet. Then, we'll be landing on the Ile de Saint in 20 minutes. Okay, I copy. Call me back on approach. I'll call you back on the approach to Ile de Saint. Fox Lima Papa. Look enormous, wow. It's beautiful, isn't it? Humongous, powerful. Look at this one coming. Yes. This is the life, isn't it? Not bad at all. We hardly ever get so much light. There's the plate tower. We're going to head right into it. Awesome. You can never know what a storm has in store until it's right on top of you. Only these two intrepid souls with their front row seat can enjoy this spectacle of the sea in its wildest state. Direction, the island of Saint, off the Pointe du Rat. Tracking storms, stalking the winds, is an offbeat profession calling for patience and intuition. The island of Saint is just magnificent, a sublime spot. It's really the end of the earth, a wild, wonderful place. It's a privilege to be here, to be able to observe nature in the raw. It's fascinating. We landed because it's clouding over. We have a patch of blue behind us. We'll take off into the clear patch, and then it'll rain again. We take off between the showers. We're only observers, but the people who live here, they live with it. It's repetitive in the winter, wind and rain, rain and wind. It's not fun for them. We're privileged. We can enjoy the sight, and it's very beautiful. In the air and on land, their friendship has lasted for 10 years. It takes complicity and trust to fly in any and all conditions. Jean-René's nickname is Kéru. It dates back to the time when he sailed the seas and earned his living with magic tricks. Pick a number from one to 10. Eight. Watch, I cut the deck. Two, four, six, eight. What was the card you picked? What's your card? You remember? Turn it over. Normal. Normal. I didn't see a thing. Okay, driver, time to take off. Looks like the clouds are lifting. The winter population of Saint is 130 souls, whose lives are punctuated by the arrival of the boats from the mainland. For several months a year, they bear the full brunt of the Atlantic's low pressure systems. When the weather's bad for the locals, it's good for us. With Thierry, we've had great moments. In 2007, there was a huge storm, something Dante-esque, 12 meter swells, 50 to 60 knot winds, fearsome, but so beautiful. The wind is blowing at 100 kilometers an hour. Kéru and Thierry head to the northern part of the Iroise Sea, about 50 kilometers away. For shooting, these are perfect conditions for getting good pictures. 
because we have good light, good winds. The color of the sea is wonderful and quite wild. At the foot of the Ile Vierge lighthouse, the conditions are exceptional. The helicopter is meeting up with other storm enthusiasts whom Keru absolutely wants to film. Thomas Traversa has just come in from Marseille this morning to take on the Britain storm. Thomas is a great windsurfer, world champion of the waves. Those rocks there are your limit. Don't go beyond them. Keep a good safety margin, because you'll be sailing out there. If there's the smallest problem, you could end up in the rocks. But just behind, there's a little bay. You could swim back to shore from there. The problem is that in addition to the swell, you have a strong wind coming in from the sea that skews everything. I'm going to try to position myself so that I can do what I want. It should be good. Of course, it's no piece of cake, but Mick filled me in. I know the places to avoid. That's the most important. As for the waves, I can handle them. But it's a new spot. There are a lot of rocks all over. I'll have to be really careful. In two seconds, you can end up in a bad spot and get hurt for nothing. Going into the water in the middle of winter, you really have to want it. Thomas is fully aware of the risks he's taking by surfing among the rocks of Ile Vierge, but he wants to give it a try, even in this 14 degree water. figure in the midst of a seething cauldron. In this raging chaotic sea, Thomas does one jump after another for two hours. That wave there, you can't see it right now. It breaks only when there's a big swell like today. Not many people ride it. There's a big swell breaking over there. It's about six or seven meters higher, maybe more. You have seven or eight meter waves further out. With Thomas, windsurfing is more than a sport. It becomes choreography. A fragile dancer, he traces arabesques between sky and sea and plays with an unchained angry ocean. In spite of the cold and approaching dusk, Thomas squeezes the last drops of enjoyment from the fading day. 
For Kieru and Thierry the pilot, their storm mission on the point of Brittany draws to a close. Thomas has signed a pact with the sea. This evening again, he is master of the waves. <laughs> 